Please join me in the call of worship. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to God's holy name. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me, O Lord, be my helper. You have turned mourning into dancing and clothed us with joy. So that my soul may praise you and not be silent. Let us worship God.
As we continue our worship of God, we come before God in confession. And would you join me now, as a family in Christ, we pray the prayer of, or of, of confession. God of creation, you make all things new. Look with mercy upon us as we confess our sins. The seeds of destruction find fertile soil in us. We nurture them to fruition. We walk the yield and find it delightful. We rejoice in the evil harvest we have sown. Save us from our love of sinning, O God. Teach us to sow your Holy Spirit and breathe eternal life. Let's take a moment now and go to God with our own personal confession. My brothers and sisters, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And in Jesus Christ we have found forgiveness. His life, death, and resurrection gave us the gift of eternal life and forgiveness. Let us give that gift of forgiveness to our brothers and sisters as well. Just as Jesus has taught us to love one another, let us do it in his name. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, your word is the lamp to our feet and the light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, amen. A reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 30, which is found on page 439 of the Pew Bible. Hear the word of the Lord. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me from, to life from among those who have gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me a strong mountain, and hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplications. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell, will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. For you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. 
so that my soul may praise, may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. This is the word of the Lord. I'd like to invite my young folks to come on down and join me up front. Yeah, don't try to sit down. Because <laughs> we're going to look at something. Oh, here we go. Okay. You see that? What is that? A cross. Do you know how it got there? A tornado. A tornado. That's right. Fifteen years ago, when a tornado came through here and tore everything up, when Mr. Chalice came into the barn that night, and I and Ron, I don't know where you're at, but... How bad was the barn torn up? The end of the barn, uh, the whole end was out about six inches. We had to, with threaded rod, we pulled the end of the barn back in. But that, yeah, that was a total wooden door, and the wooden door, every board in the wooden door blew inward, and them two boards just happened to tangle on that broken chain. And it's been 15 years I've been hanging there. That's the first thing we, when we came into the barn, that was the first thing we noticed that night. So, Mr. Ron didn't put that up there. No, no, no. I wonder who did. <laughs> who could have done that? Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Thank well, I don't know if it's Jesus. He might have turned water into wine somewhere. So. <laughs> but definitely, this is a sign from God that not only was the barn not completely demolished, but it's also a sign from God that even in really bad times and when things are at its very worst, when things are torn up and it looks like it's hopeless, that there is God. That God is amongst us all. And that this is a reminder to us that He never, ever leaves us. Never. That He's always there. Even in the worst. And, the, and that tornado was horrible. It did horrible damage to the town. And many people lost their lives. And we even have people in our congregation who lost family members to that tornado. And yet this reminds us that even in those moments of great grief and sorrow, our God is there with us, that he understands. And the cross represents that moment when God gave it all and said, this is because I love you. And that reminds us that he does love us. And no matter what, no matter when, no matter how, God is always in the midst of it all. And protecting and loving us, even if we can't feel it, He's there. Even if we don't sense it, He's there. Because sometimes when we get ourselves all tied up in knots, we, don't, we can't notice God is there. We're too busy paying attention to ourselves. I had a good friend one time that said, in the darkest of moments is when God is the closest because God's light is so brilliant that we're blind to that. And it seems like a dark moment. Remember that throughout your life. That the brilliance of God is not just here on Sunday mornings. It's not just here if you go to Bible school. It's not just here if you remember God once or twice a week. It's there every single day for every <laughs> single person. And that's pretty awesome. Don't you think? I think it's awesome. I, I depend on it. And you know, you know me. God has a lot of work to do with me. <laughs> He's still trying to figure out why he made me a minister. <laughs> I want to deal with this piece now. He's still working on it. But we're all, we're all projects. Let's say a prayer together, and then we can all go sit back down. Gracious God, we thank you that you are always present. That even when we think you have left us, you are there. That even when we feel alone, your presence is right beside us. And you remind us of that in these moments, these moments of miracle, these things in which it reminds us that you are always at work. Bless these young people that as they go into the future, they may lead this world in understanding how important it is to be a child of God and how important it is to value each other as such. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thanks, guys. <coughs> Good job.
Our New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke. Hear now what Luke has to say to us this morning. After this point, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place, and where he was himself intending to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in your peace will rest, shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into its street and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and ever whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and all, for all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At my very first church that I served, we had a food pantry, and we had a, a particularly difficult person who would come visit the food pantry, and, um, but would always kind of give us a, a real hard time, and eventually he kind of stopped coming to the pantry. And one of our ladies that worked there, her name was Elizabeth White, who now has gone to her own glory, but she was really worried about the fact that he hadn't had any, hadn't come and gotten groceries for three or four weeks. And so she said to me, Pastor Joel, could we just make up a couple of boxes of groceries and take them out to Mr. So-and-so's house and deliver them to him? She goes, I know that he needs food, but I think he's angry because, uh, because Carl, the other guy there, told him something, and I'm not going to say what in church. So there was a little altercation. Let's just put it that way. And so I said, okay, sure, well, I'll be glad to do that. So we piled food into boxes, and we got in the car, and we drove up there, and and I should add that Mrs. White was 93 at the time. She was very old. And not, not very old, because we got people, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> we got young people, really. A lot, I, I should look so good at 60. Anyway, so we get, in, we get to this guy's house, and Mrs. White picks these boxes up, and she carries them to the front door, and she rings the doorbell, and the guy comes out. And he sees her standing there with these boxes, and he grabs the boxes from her, and he throws the food out of the boxes into the front yard. And said, get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! And, I mean, there was food, uh, cans of food and boxes of food all over the yard. Well, you know, me, not being Mrs. White, I was like, get in the car, honey, we're going home. You can pick up that food yourself. Not Mrs. White. She looked at me and she said, you know, Pastor, you must be having a bad day. <laughs> and she went and picked all the food up and put it back in the box and put it on his front step. She didn't ring the doorbell again, thank goodness. And she said, we'll just leave it there. And if he wants to throw it in the yard again, he can. But let's just, um, let's just leave it there on the doorstep. I said, you're a better person than I am. But yes, OK, fine. So we get in the car, and I notice, I notice that she has her shoes off, and I feel like it's really odd because she was from a generation where ladies did not take off their shoes in the car with their pastor. And uh, <laughs> it should still be that way, especially the way some of these sneeze the feet smell. Anyway. Um, 
<laughs> Jane told me to take extra meds this morning, but I didn't know. Um, for those of you who don't know, Jane's my wife, like George Jetson, and yes, she does steal my wallet. Anyway, we, uh, so I said, are you okay? Are, are your feet hurting? And she said, no, I'm shaking the dust. And I said, wow. And that was the first time that I'd actually seen somebody use that scripture about shaking the dust when you weren't received. She didn't hate him. She didn't treat him badly. She didn't do anything. But she had proved to him exactly what Jesus Christ had said, that the kingdom of God had come near. He hadn't accepted it, but she left it there for him anyway. And then, but she wasn't going to allow him to thwart her in her mission to serve him and to, and to be a good disciple of Jesus Christ. I, I have remembered that all these long years ago, that I'll never forget her doing that. And, and there have been times in my own life, and I'm sure there's been times in your lives too, when, when you do something for somebody and, and, and then they just they kind of just go, uh, and you feel horrible and you're angry. And sometimes just the mere act of taking your shoes off and just doing that is a way of just letting it go. Letting it go and letting God take care of it. Jesus sends these disciples out knowing that they're going to encounter people that are not going to receive the message. They're going to encounter people who are not nice to them. They're going to encounter people who want to throw them out into the middle of the front yard. They're going to have those moments where the people will not accept them. And instead of beating themselves up over it and saying, well, I, didn't, I, I should have been better, or I should have been, or I should have done this, or whatever, Jesus says, don't worry about it. It's going to happen, but it's okay. And it's okay to go. You don't have to stay there and be abused. You don't have to be abused. Another part of this scripture that I found very fascinating is that Jesus says something really interesting, and you have to understand ancient Israel to really understand what he was saying. He said, eat what is ever put before you. Well, everybody that was a good Jew knew that there were, there were laws about what you ate and what you didn't eat. And there were things that you couldn't do and shouldn't do, or it would make you ritually unclean, or make you unable to be a part of the society until you repented and did whatever. And But Jesus says, when you go into these homes and they put something before you, don't say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't eat that. Go ahead and eat it. Because in that act of welcoming you, they may be presenting you with their finest. And for you to turn down that finest is going to not build any kind of relationship. I mean, if you have a dinner party and you've spent all day cooking and the people come to the dinner table and they, you lay out all the food and then somebody looks at it and goes, oh, I don't eat that. How do you feel? You feel unaccepted? You feel wrong? And that's not what Jesus wanted to happen. He wanted these disciples to forge relationships. So he was saying, put away the old ways of doing things, and this is the new way. We become welcoming. We do what we need to do to let people know that they are loved, regardless of whether they know the rules or they don't know the rules. It's not about that. It's about relationship. It's about love and comfort and peace and joy. And if there is joy in those moments where even if you're not supposed to have it, you're eating it anyway, and don't, if there's a doctor in the house, don't come yelling at me about diabetics, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the laws of saying, oh, you couldn't have, you couldn't eat anything that was, well, you couldn't have ham, or you couldn't have shellfish, or you couldn't have, and perhaps these people were not Jewish. And he was taking, they were taking the message into places that, that weren't necessarily Jewish homes. So they wouldn't know. And instead of offending those people and turning them away, Jesus has said, do what you need to do to, to make, make them feel okay. And tell them that the kingdom of God has come near. In that relationship moment, we cannot get any closer to the kingdom of God. There's no closer place to be than when you love and accept somebody for where they are, who they are, how they are. And you say, okay, God, this is one of your brilliant, wonderful, glorious creations. And regardless, I love them because you created them.
I have to say, though, that that scripture used to make me mad because my grandmother would always say, it says in the Bible, eat what's put before you. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're taking that out of context, Grandma. Well, you know, nobody ever takes biblical verse out of context, right? <laughs> we have to be careful about that as well. Jesus intended the gospel of peace and love to be a joyful message, not a weapon, not a message of hate or division, but a message that brings us together as the body of Christ, as one, as one valued, loved, broken, wonderful, terrifying, glorious group. And until we can grasp that and shake the dust out of any of those mis misguided moments of our own lives, when we can do that, think of how close we have come to the Almighty God and the kingdom of Almighty God. May it be so for all of us this day. And I'm going to end now because I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to up. So, and I'm going to be spending eternity that way, so I might as well. Amen. We get to do something that is one of my very favorite things to do. And I'm going to invite my dear friend, Sally Adderton, to come forward. You're on, Sally. No, end of the sermon. Okay, all right. <laughs> Sally is becoming a member of Waltham Presbyterian Church today. And so we welcome you to our family in Christ, and we, we rejoice at what you bring to us. Your joy, your love, your intellect, your your ability to see and, and to know and to love. We rejoice that you now are here to declare your faith and to share with us in our common ministry, a ministry that was given to us by Jesus Christ. In the community of God's people, we have learned of God's purpose and for all creation. You have been nurtured at the table of our Lord and called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hear these words from our Holy Scripture. We are what God has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Now as you publicly declare your faith, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus our Lord, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which to, you were baptized. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Thank you. And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I am, I will, I do. You have publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of our congregation, our family, and share in its worship and ministry? And through your prayers and your gifts and your study and service, fulfill your calling to be a disciple of our Lord Jesus. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a first for me. <laughs> Usually people are like, yes. <laughs> That's right. It's everybody. Let us pray together. Gracious God, by water and spirit, you claim us as your own. You made us members of your body, the church, and you call us to be your servants in this world. Renew in Sally the covenant you made with her in her baptism and continue the good work that you have begun in her. Send her forth in the power of your Holy Spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. O Lord, Uphold your servant, Sally, by your Holy Spirit. Increase in her daily your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Welcome to this ministry. Hallelujah. And y'all can hug on her later. Yeah, I, hugs are absolute. <laughs> and now we will sing our next hymn. Hit it, Jimmy. <laughs>
We believe in one God, our Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again for a judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We come to this time of prayer together, and I want us to remember uh, Bev and Don and uh, Kristen and Billy. Um, I heard from Bev last night, as many of you from Waltham know, Bev and Don took off last week to go to Virginia to be with. Um, Kristen and Billy. Billy has ALS and, is, and has been experiencing those last times of his life, his last days. And uh, they were able to get a pain pump that has helped him relax and he's able to sleep. But it's a terrible burden, I mean, for him to bear with this disease. And it's awful, an awful burden to watch and to have to be there and not be able to do anything for him other than just to be there. And so we ask God's presence, not only for Billy, because we know God has him in the palm of his hand, but we also ask for Ben and Don and Kristen and their family, the, everyone who is going through it, and those who have been caregivers know that that is the hardest job there is, is to give care to someone and to wish so desperately for a different outcome. So let's remember them in prayer this day. Also, we, we pray for all of our young people throughout the world that... that um, there's a triennium that the Presbyterian Church is going to be having, and we pray for safe travels for all of the youth that are going to that triennium. Um, I believe that the one that I got to go to a few years ago had 5,000 young people from all over the world celebrating and being together and being joyful. And until you see that moment, until you're a part of that moment, you, you if you worry about the church's history, forget it. These young people have a fire. It may not be the fire that we understand, but they have a fire for God and a fire for Jesus Christ. And they're going to be the ones to lead us into the future. Whatever that might bring, and whatever incarnation God has decided the church is to be. But they are still there. They still love our God. And they're still active. And I think we don't give them credit enough. I think we look at them sometimes and say, well, they're kids. They don't care. They do. And until we recognize that they do, it's us that have the problem. Okay, sermon number five done. <laughs> Are there any other joys or concerns? Carol. A good friend of mine, Judy, um, she lives alone, but a lot of us do. She fell down the basement steps on Monday night, and nobody found her until Tuesday afternoon. And as far as I know now, she's still in Peoria at the hospital. She had broken vertebrae. No feeling or control of her body from the neck down. Oh my gosh. And I don't know, I can't I can't stop thinking about her like there's nothing I can do for her except pray for her. Absolutely. For those who couldn't hear that, um, Carol had a friend Judy who fell down in the basement steps and fractured a vertebrae in her neck and can't feel anything, has no control from the neck down. Um, she fell on Monday and they didn't find her till Tuesday afternoon. 
So she's in the hospital of Peoria, and, and Carol has asked us, and I, and I agree that we should all pray for Judy. And, and the doctors and the nurses and all the research, you know, we forget that God gave us that gift, too. So. Are there others? Phyllis? Uh, Monica said that Dr. Mayo was actually this morning. Um, she's got some stuff this morning. So just thinking of prayers for Monica. Prayers for Monica. Any others? We didn't hear. Oh, uh, Monica is going up to Mayo's for more. Uh, it's a treatment. She's got some tests. She's, she's got, got some tests and. and uh, like her first appointment is at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Her first appointment is 8 o'clock tomorrow. So they're on their way now to Mayo for, uh, for tests and yeah. treatments and whatever whatever they decide she needs. So. Matt? I just want to join my dad. This past Thursday, of course, I'll wait for 6 o'clock. And me and my sister spent a lot of time on the phone. And also, take travel for my sister and her husband and her husband. Right. For those who couldn't hear, Matt's dad celebrated 60, a, ch a mere child, and um, he was able to celebrate that with his sisters, and they had a wonderful time asking for traveling mercies for um, his sisters as they travel back home. Sally? So I just want to say that um, thank you for welcoming me to your lovely and wonderful spiritual family. I have an open door policy when I was born, my dad is the mayor of Mount Morris. So my nickname is often wherever I live, the mayor of whatever that neighborhood is. <laughs> because, you know, I'm a chip off the old block. And so I live in Utica now on Canal Street, right across from the parking lot. The Aikens House is there, and the museum is there. I don't hear a new look ears, so I can't locate sound, and my doorbell doesn't work. So if the door is open, there is a flight of stairs, yell, and if you can't come up, I'll come down, <laughs> or just come on in. Um, I, I welcome, you know, anyone in my door. So thank you. Thank and you. this afternoon, too, for sure, I'll be here. <laughs> We have a First Presbyterian of Ottawa. It's a joy to be with you all today. Uh, we heard from our... Um, Stand up, because I want to introduce you. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm this Jenny This is Pastor Sedam. Jenny. Um, I forgot how to pronounce that. I'm Jenny Sedam. And I'm filling in for John Walker at the uh, First Presbyterian Church in Ottawa. John Walker is on sabbatical for the summer. Uh, it is a joy to be with you all this morning uh, for the First Press family. I heard from Natalie last night. Uh, they have a mission team in Uganda. And uh, they're doing very well. They're looking forward to exploring the country for the next couple of days, and they begin their journey home on Wednesday. For safe travels for that, for wonderful mission work. Are there any others? Yes, Linda. Um, I think that's Linda. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> we just want to thank everybody for being here and prayers for everybody. And Ron and I couldn't be happier. Thank you for the well, Ottawa Church coming and for our friends and special guests from Joliet, Ron and Mark. Where yeah. are you, Ron? They're over there somewhere. There's <laughs> uh, 13 air travel down from Joliet. The Messiah Lutheran Church, is that right? Yes. yes. To be with us. And uh, Dawn, Vaughn and Sally, through a connection, are uh, through the 4 H pair setting up uh, sound systems. Yeah. Dawn's been with us to make sure we have sound downstairs and upstairs, and she's worked with, uh, I don't know who this is back here. <laughs> Trouble. I just saw the I think she, <laughs> this is Pastor uh, Pastor Joel's wife, Jane. She's our She's been our keyboard today. And the tone chimes, you know, you. Uh, the committee that takes a lot more than Linda and I, we had a lot of help. Uh, More than the committee. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, and uh, the, let's see, uh, Don, and, Don and Beth, uh, they got this committee started. They helped us a lot, and we really miss them today. And uh, I don't know, it just goes back every time we have something like this. I think Lynn and I think of two people we like to honor when we have something like this, and that's, uh, that's somebody that's downstairs, Melvin and Malcolm. You know, we always think of Melvin Hagenbaugh and Malcolm Wemple. And uh, they are the stalwarts, and, and we just, we miss them today. And, uh, but we got, Mel we got Melvin downstairs. But uh, anyway, and the chairs, 
The way the, the reason this looks so nice, the chairs all match, and that's because of our good friend Pat. And uh, they're just people that donated. You know, we get donations, whatever we need. We need ice, we need chairs, we need tents. Uh, Vaughn and uh, who, who was cooking? Vaughn and Jeff. Yeah. Where's Jeff? I think I don't think they're up here. They're, they're probably cleaning up. They're probably taking a nap. <laughs> if any of you happen to see them cooking back there, you'll know how the pancakes and the and the and the bacon and everything went together. They do a fantastic job. They the, did. It is a, it is a limited item that did it. It's it's the committee and and again we welcome. This is this is something to have this many people. I think we're up to about 132, 135. <laughs> How many? She says there's 113 up here, and there's probably 20 some downstairs. Is that the temperature? Or the <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> Linda says we got an option. We could possibly add on to the barn. <laughs> That'd be up to you. Or we can get an elevator so yes. we can all come up. And air conditioning. And an air conditioning. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings, God. Thank you, Ron and Linda. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've given to us. And we thank you for the opportunity to share worship with our brothers and sisters from Ottawa. We thank you for Pastor Jenny and her work with them. We ask you, God, to be with your children who are in this world doing your mission work. We pray that they return home safely and that they can share those stories, those wonderful, amazing stories of your work throughout this world. We ask you to be with Judy and with the doctors and the nurses who will attend to her. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to be together and to worship you and the freedom to claim you as our Lord and Savior. Today, God, we remember Bev and Don and Kristen and Billy and their family as they go through this, this terrible time together, this very difficult time, but we know, God, that you are there in the midst that your love and your light and your comfort is raining down upon them as we speak. We ask you, God, to be with the people who will be traveling home and for joyous birthday celebrations and all of those wonderful things that go with that. We thank you, God, for people who volunteer their time so that our worship can be wonderful and that we can be together. We are blessed, God, to be a family in Christ. Help us to bless the world as well, inviting them into this wonderful family, a family that is big and beautiful and welcoming. Almighty God, we come before you in a time of silence. And in that time of silence, we give you the things of our hearts, the things that have troubled us, the things that have angered us or burdened us, and we give them to you, God, for your care. And help us, God, to leave them in your hands. Teach us, God, that in your hands is the best place for any of these things, and that for us to take them back will cause us nothing but pain. Hear us now, God, as we empty ourselves of the things that only you can hear and that only you can handle. Almighty God, be with Monica and Fred and their whole family as they go to Mayo and get them home safely. And we ask for wonderful results from the tests and any of the treatments. Now, God, we give to you this prayer, a prayer that was the prayer your son gave to us. It's become our family prayer. Hear us as together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
continue our worship of Almighty God. Let us give back to God as God has so richly given to us.
east and west, from north and south, to sit together at the table of God. Brothers and sisters, this is not a Presbyterian table. It is not the table of Waltham, and it is not the table of First Press in Ottawa. This is the Lord's table, and all who believe and love him are invited to join together in this feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You are always the same, and your years will never end. You made us in your image and called us to be your people. But we turn from you, leaving sin and death to reign. Still, you loved us and sought us. In Christ, your grace defeated death and opened the way to eternal life. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent your only begotten, in whom your fullness dwells, to be for us the way, the truth, and the life, revealing in your love. Jesus taught those who would hear him, healed those who believed in him, received all who sought him, and lifted the burden of their sin. We glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new people by water and the Spirit. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, eternal God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, it was the night that Jesus was betrayed that he gathered with his friends in an upper room, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and praise. And as the cup was poured, he said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, of my blood shed for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. For when we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, until he comes again in glory. The table is prepared. Come now to the table of the Lord. We will be serving communion by intention, so if you would come up the center aisle, receive the elements, and then return to your seats by the side aisles.
this table. But it is a mere foretaste of the banquet that you have prepared for us beyond our human sight. Sustain us by this sacrament, Almighty God, and remind us of the sacrifice that was made for us. Let us in turn then love our brothers and sisters as you have, as you have loved us. We ask this and we claim this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is O Beautiful for Spacious Skies, and it's in your history. Ah! Uh -huh. 